All right. Now let's talk about what is lateral and what is medial to the to uh, to the, to the, to the uh, you know to the second part of the duodenum. So we can see laterally we have got this guy. What, what is this one? This is your ascending colon. Like colon is going upward. So but it's actually lateral to your second part of the duodenum. So that's why we, we we just put it over here. So we write down the ascending colon, which is actually lateral to the uh, lateral to the first part. Again, we have a flexor here. Flexor is nothing. It's just a turning point or a changing point from the ascending colon to the transverse colon. So we call this call this flexor as your right colic flexor. So this right colic flexor, this flexor, like this turning point. So we call it right colic flexor, flexor, right? So this is your right colic flexor, kind of taking a turn, a turn from the uh, ascending column to the transverse column. This is also on the lateral side. And w one thing more that is remaining uh, is actually the right lobe of the liver. So right lobe of liver is still coming down and covering up the uh, coming covering up the lateral side as well. Because it's this guy, the right lobe of liver is kind of covering the most of the area like this one. So we also add up the right lobe of liver, right? And on the medial side, if we talk about the medial side, we know we can see the bis big, biggest structure. This is actually the head of the pancreas. So we kind of add up the word head of pancreas and what is what is those structures are remaining two other structures these are ducts so we have got the bile duct bile duct and the main pancreatic duct pancreatic duct in case if we have the accessory pancreatic duct we can also add up the accessory pancreatic duct on the medial side of the second part of the duodenum now let's talk about another part of the duodenum that is the third part of the duodenum which is also interesting so uh, before going to talk about the relations of the third part of the duodenum we must talk a little bit theory about it because in the third part of duodenum we know this guy is actually present horizontally right so this guy is present horizontally to the left on the subcostal plane actually which actually passing you know in front of the vertebral column and following the lower margin of the head of the pancreas you can see this guy this is your head of the pancreas this is your head, head, head of the pancreas so this guy your third part of the genome is actually following the lower margin of your pancreas so nothing important about it uh, we'll talk about uh, a lot of difference in other next next lecture but now let's talk about the relations of the third part of the genome uh, to to the structures that are present around him so uh, if we're going to talk about the anterior relation of the uh, of this guy, the third part, third part, we know that the root of mesentery of the small intestine. You must remember what is root of mesentery. If you don't know what is root of mesentery, you must have uh, have to listen to another lecture that is on the root of mesentery to have a good idea what is actually root of mesentery. So root of mesentery kind of I start from here. This junction uh, we call this junction. Uh, I don't I, for, I forgot what it, what we call it. But uh, this root of mesentery start from this junction and end up the, the ileocecal junction kind of crosses this guy so that's why we can we can say that anterior uh, anteriorly we have the root of mesentery root of mesentery right so we have the root of mesentery anteriorly uh, anterior to the uh, this one of the small intestine and other other structure we have the superior mesentric valves combined within it so uh, we we talked about this one you, you can see these are superior mesentric vessels crossing anterior to this third part so we we can add up so we have two structures the root of mesentery and the superior mesentric vessels in vessels we, i mean both veins and the arteries and the third structure we have is the cause of jejunum, jejunum, right? Jejunum. And the posterior, if you talk about the posterior structure that are present, uh, it's, it's very easy to understand the posterior structure. The first structure we're gonna add up is your right ureter. You can see it's kind of in the third region as well. So you're gonna add up your right ureter, right ureter, which is actually on the posterior side, and your right swast muscle. So I have made this muscle, and this is called the swast muscle. So this is actually your right swast muscle. So you can also add up your right swast muscle, right? And other structure that is out here, and uh, that one is your 
um, that one is your like we have played about the right swast muscle and two structures which are actually passing the third one this is your biggest structure there is your inferior vena cava and this one other structure there is your aorta the abdominal aorta so we will say that we have got the inferior vena cava and the abdominal aorta right so these are also posterior to the third part we can see here this guy is coming back backward or posterior to the third part of the duodenum if we're going to talk about the superiorly water structure as present superiorly, it's very easy to see in this diagram that superiorly we have got the pancreas. So we will simply write head of pancreas. We have got, you can see out here, so it's the head of pancreas. Head of pancreas. And inferiorly, if you're going to see, we have got the coils of jejunum. Not, uh, not a big deal. Coils of jejunum, right? I'm sorry about my writing, but this is it. Now you have to deal with it to remember it.